This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Gospel in Sermon and Song, sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California. Released on a special network of selected radio stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas. Maintained by prayerful, free will, tax-deductible gifts of listeners. Someone has said that the only certain thing about life is its uncertainty. We don't know what our future holds. But as a born-again Christian, I can say that I know who holds the future. Jesus knows, and that's enough for me. Father, in these days of uncertainty, we know for full certainty that the Lord Jesus Christ lives forevermore. Thou sent thy Son into this world to live and to die, keeping the law, atoning for our sins, and buried our sins in the grave, rose victoriously, is ascended at the right hand of thee, our Heavenly Father, soon coming in the clouds of the sky. And therefore we can say with a poet, our future is as bright as the promises of God. Thank you for this certainty. May those who are grappling with life's problems find certainty in Christ and live forever for thee. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. For years after my brother Paul Gerhardt's conversion, he sang a number of gospel testimony songs. Little did we realize that he would so soon suffer serious illness and die. He had prepared some special arrangements in Minneapolis of some of his favorites, but did not live to complete his album. But we have some of those recorded arrangements of songs that he had made. And today we bring to our listeners one of his favorites, Someday When Jesus Comes.
Little is Much When God Is In It is the title of our selected Song of the Month written by Mrs. F. W. Suffield. Mrs. Norheim and I will be singing it this month. And you may have a free copy of Words and Music on request. It's not found in many songbooks to our knowledge, but we have made printed copies you may have for the asking. Just ask for Little is Much and address your letter to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. In Canada, you may write to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. <laughs>
If little is much when God is in it, then the opposite is also true, that much is little when God is not in it. All the fortunes acquired, investments, houses, and lands possessed must be left behind when we die. We can't take it with us. Six feet of earth make us all of one size. God owns my business, said Letourneau, the great road equipment inventor, who gave over 90% of his wealth to God's work. What a striking contrast to millions of people who live as if God did not exist. No, we don't depend on the millionaires to support God's work. A small percentage may be dedicated supporters, but it's plain, ordinary people like you radio friends who carry the load. And we recognize this with thanksgiving to both you and God. You owe God and country and creditors, but you owe God first. And this is what makes the difference. God honors all who honor him, and so do we. Thank you for your faithful support. Without it, we'd soon be passing out of the picture. Our address, remember, is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I repeat, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. And in Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. The required zip code in Canada is S7K3K4. Before Associate Wilmer Gunderson brings today's message, he and his wife Joanne sing, There's No Friend to Me Like Jesus.
Gunderson, I'd like to share with you today from the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter on the ten virgins that we read of in Scripture. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Well, notice as we read the Bible, Jesus spoke often in parables. This parable speaks of the kingdom of heaven, how we are to get into the kingdom of heaven. And this creates an interest within my own heart because I want to learn of the Lord and I want to be ready to meet him when he comes well notice how the parable speaks of the ten virgins how they were alike in so many ways yet their destiny was so different they were alike in that they were all virgins they all had lamps they all had oil they all slept they all heard they all arose they all trimmed their lamps but the amount of oil that they had on hand was different. Yet, we'll notice, it speaks of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It seems you would need less faith to believe in the second advent of Jesus than the first. Why? Because he's been here before, and he knows the way to come again. And the good shepherd came once to lay down his life for a sheep, and he will come again to recompense the under-shepherds who have been faithful to keep the night watch for him. As the bridegroom comes for the bride, so Christ will come and take his bride unto himself. First we'll notice then the invitation. We receive an invitation to a wedding today, open invitation sometimes, now, here we see God inviting, and ten of these people came, ten virgins. God invites all mankind. He invites and he extends it even to the uttermost parts of the world. Take, for example, where he says in 1 Timothy 2, 4, God who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, we are to seek him while he is to be found, and we're to call upon him while he is near. So God's invitation is extended to every single nation, every tribe and every tongue. God himself is the one inviting us. By the way, the number 10 means the, a number of perfection. So secondly, we'll notice where God then comes and uh, says we are to be prepared. Preparation. There was only one basic difference between the five foolish and the five wise virgins. That was, the wise had enough oil, the foolish did not have enough. What does this then mean? The oil is speaking of the Holy Spirit of God. Take, for example, where he says in Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led or driven by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So spiritual life it was is what makes a difference in a Christian's life. Now, 
it's not the external look that's so important. They all looked alike, you might say. But it's the internal, an internal experience with God, a living faith in Him, not dead faith. For example, that's what the book of James is combating, dead orthodoxy, where they claim to know God and their life spoke louder than words, where they didn't live in a right relationship with the Lord. So, in this parable here, we notice without oil, the lamp will not burn. And therefore, also without Christ himself indwelling in your life, a person does not have spiritual life. Therefore, one man cannot give that holy oil to another. Only God can do it. One man cannot save another soul. Only God can save you. We need divine preparation for eternity so we do not deceive ourselves. The Bible speaks of a midnight cry that comes. Also in the Old Testament in Amos 4.12, he says, be prepared to meet your God. When a person is prepared and ready, he cries out even like John did, come Lord Jesus. The third thing we'll notice is the destination. Scripture says that we are to be on alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour when Jesus Christ will come. Five of these virgins came too late. The answer was given them why they did not come in to the kingdom of God. Jesus says in verse 12 in which we read, I do not know you. No wonder they were called foolish. Undoubtedly they had been warned. But then time elapsed. The door was shut. And the Bible tells me, he who shuts the door and no one can enter it, we read of that in Revelations. So therefore, their destination was where they were without hope. They were lost for eternity. But the wise, they were ready. They went in to be with him to the wedding feast where there was bliss and joy. Never a moment of regret, never a moment of sorrow. Scripture tells us, he that believeth in me shall not be put to shame, the scripture says. We will behold his glory, be like him even. It's all because of Jesus, our Redeemer who dwells within my heart and life with his Holy Spirit. He is like a magnet that draws the scraps of metal from the heap of sawdust. So when he will come, he will draw us unto himself, and we will spend an eternity together with him. You know, as I think of this parable, I, I, I think... A believer has the best awaiting him. Oh, others may laugh. Others may scoff, poke fun at him. But friend, we've got the best awaiting us if we have Jesus Christ within our heart and life. An unbeliever, like the five foolish virgins, they have the worst awaiting them. Therefore, we call out to you. Maybe you're not ready today. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We're not here to throw stones at you or poke fun at you or anything like that. We want to just invite you and say, come to Jesus. Come right where you are. Maybe driving behind the wheel of a car. Maybe standing by the uh, washing machine or wherever you are. Why don't you come? Pray a sinner's prayer. Open your heart's door and allow Jesus to come in. And allow his Holy Spirit to flood your life and your heart. And allow the peace of God to come into your life. You know, if you need spiritual help, why don't you write to us? Lutheran Gospel Hour, we'd like to be of spiritual help to you, if you'll only let us know. Please do that today. Father, today we pray in Jesus' name that you might draw men and women, children, boys and girls unto yourself as they are reminded of the day in which you're coming back. We're to be ready. Many people aren't ready, Lord. 
And we just want to pray for them that they might open their heart's door even today and allow you in. We pray of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Often I watch the clouds up in the sky. Always I'd heard they were many miles high. Then as they sailed out of sight far away, I said I'm going far higher someday. Soon he is coming to earth, praise his name. Soon we with Jesus in glory shall reign. Then as I mount up to regions on high, I'm going higher beyond the blue sky. I'm going higher, yes, higher someday. I'm going higher to stay Over the clouds and beyond the blue sky Going where none ever sicken or die Loved ones to meet in the sweet by and by I'm going higher Some day Listening to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. Listeners in Canada should write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This is Pastor Arn Orheim inviting you to tune in again next week. Same.